Uh, all right. So, again, some of this conversation was started from a videotape, which has uh, reached a level of circulation around the Web from a woman who was standing on her front lawn videotaping uh, four police officers uh, in a, 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 a would be drug bust that turned into nothing. Not only did the guy he had not violated any traffic laws, but he also, as it turns out, didn't have any drugs on him. Uh, and uh, and the only person who ends up getting arrested is this woman who is standing on her own front lawn uh, where this scene was taking place right in front of her house and she was videotaping it. Uh, and then you heard later on that uh, uh, there was a community rally for her and uh, many people in uh, have said that the Rochester police were out giving tickets for people even if they were just an inch or two over the line for parking – which some people interpret as a kind of harassment. Now, I only say that to you just for context for that, because I don't know where this is going to go, but this is Mark, who's a current Rochester police officer on Coast to Coast. Mark? Yes. Must be a tough week for you guys. Um, I, you know, all in all, not really. I mean, it okay. is, the, you know, the publicity is, you know, is, is rough. Unfortunately uh, for us, there's, there's nothing a lot that the officers can do. What what I'm doing right now, I, I'm there's a good possibility I can get in trouble for it. But uh, I I can't speak to any specifics. Obviously, of the incident, I'm not allowed to do that. And but I won't ask you. What I what I can say is, first of all, let me preface this by saying I I did not hear the entire conversation of your show. I caught a, a small part. I turned the show on, and uh, happened to hear a few statements by um, yourself some other officers calling in and apparently a, a chief of police who's an expert. On... Former chief of police, professor of criminology. Right. Okay. Um, I, I personally, I, any officer that gets on the air and gives an opinion on what another officer did without knowing all the facts of the incident, I have no respect for that person. Um, there are, there are a lot of things that, that go on in an incident that are not made public. This in particular um, is one incident. That seems to – and again, I'm not going to – since you bring up this particular incident, I can only respond in kind by saying that seems like – and I'm, brother, let me just tell you, I, I know this may sound inflammatory. It seems like a little bit of a ploy to say that because the entire videotape from beginning to end, unedited, we played it earlier, people have heard it, and it seems like for anybody watching it, that there was nothing more that was said, nothing more that was done other than this woman standing there in her pajamas, barefoot, videotaping this police officer. And three of the four officers were not bothered by it at all. But one cop was and it got it just stuck in his craw. And so the idea that there's something else out there that you can't talk about seems like secret evidence. You know, there was nothing in the police report. The pup, the one that was filed that said that she had said anything. There's nothing that says she had said, I'm going to shoot you or anything that should ever have let this guy feel unsafe because she's standing on her lawn with a video camera. Your thought on that? Well, there are, there were actions taken by the people in that occurred prior to the video being taken. And, and by her, there were, yes. And there were, and there were requests by officers um, for compliance, a number of, uh, apparently with other people there. Um, well, again, you're, I, again, you're speaking I to this, in, I can't get but you're specific. speaking to the specifics, but I will tell you, we had a witness on in the first hour who stood next to her the entire time and said not, she didn't say anything. She hadn't done anything. And she's the only one that they come after. The guy who's standing next to her is six foot two. And they come after the woman with the video camera. Come on. I, again, I, I, I can't tell you about specifics. I can't, I can't indicate to you that whether or not you should believe this person in question uh, that called your show. Uh, I can't tell you about the person herself. Um, that she's an activist. It's a, that she's an environmental activist. But even if she even if she hates cops, I mean, I don't. You don't. Even if she does, it's still her constitutional right to hate cops. <laughs> As long as she doesn't actually do anything to interfere, and videotaping shouldn't be considered interference. As, a, as an officer who works in an urban setting um, where there is a, a good amount of violence, um, it, it is tough for an officer to be making a, uh, an, an action with a person on the street 
and have to worry about other people in the area. Um, when you ask people to, to step back, you know, and, and, and they don't comply immediately, and, and now you're, you're, your attention is diverted. You're con- right. You have to give concern to other people other than the, the person at hand. And when, and when, you're, when your attention is diverted like that, it is an officer safety issue. All right, but let me. Now, it, now, and, and wait, wait, but in this also, case, I'd though, like remember. To understand but wait, 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 wait. I just want to be very clear. He asks her to go into her house. He tells her, "You have to go into your house." It's not just step back. She's fifteen feet away on her lawn, and the officer says, "You go into your house." He doesn't tell it to anybody else in the neighborhood, anybody else standing there. But the woman with the video camera, you have to go into your house. Now that at some point. It defies reason as to why she is such a threat in her pajamas and bare feet, why she has to go back into her house, not step back, go into your house. And, and I understand what you're saying. You know, is there an immediate threat from her? Who knows? You know, I, I, I wasn't like I said, I wasn't at the scene and I'm not going to second guess any officer until I have all the facts. And but you'll second guess a citizen without the facts. I'm not second guessing anybody. Okay. I'm telling you that everybody's piling on the officers in this in this situation without knowing all the facts. You're, everybody's merely taking her her side. Uh, and well, shouldn't all the my, facts be in the police here. report? Shouldn't all the facts be in the police report? Why why are there no why are there these extenuating facts out there that would justify these this police officer's actions that are not in the police report? I you know what I haven't even read the report myself. I I haven't. Uh, I, I, I've, I'm not privy to all this information. Um, I, all I understand it, I, I know from for a fact that that there was more to the incident that was depicted than was depicted on the video. But you say that for and a I fact, and but I you can't. get you don't know that for a fact. You know, you've been told there is, but if you haven't seen the report, then what you are you're you're going on, and I have no reason to suspect that you have any other reason other than this is good collegial relationship. If another cop says no, there's more to it. You'll trust that other cop. But at some point, it has to come down to there has to be some sort of horizon line that we can all fly by, right? There has to be some sort of um, plumb line that we can judge good, bad, right, wrong. And without that, then we can't just say, well, no, there's more to this. You can't know it. I can't tell you. But it's out there. Trust me. Because that's not how our legal system is supposed to work. There. There's a lot, a lot more goes on in a police situation and the legal situation than the public is under, is aware of. I mean, there's there are always political ramifications, right. and, and and you have to, and that's something you have to understand. Unfortunately, you know, like I said, I can't, I can't go into that kind of thing. But one thing I would also wish that people would look into is the demeanor of the officer involved. The demeanor um, meaning, the mean, meaning that his, the way he interacted with that with that person was wrong. No, I'm at, I'm telling you the way he he spoke to her, the the way he treated her. As far as um, he, he he did act professionally. He was courteous. He did he he didn't get abusive. He didn't he wasn't. Can I can I say what he did do, and then you could comment? On this? He got totally obtuse. He he, he got. He, he got. To, you couldn't follow him. What he was saying? No, 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 no. He's making the charge that she's doing something. You can't say she's being obtuse. She has every right to be obtuse. He's the one with the authority. So when he starts saying these non sequiturs and and alleging that she's doing something, and she's just standing there and it's all being recorded, you can't say afterward. Oh, but he was being professional about it. That's okay. I think he was being professional right up to the point where he focused on her, came up on the lawn, and arrested her. I think that's where the professionalism, to me, that's where he lost control of the situation, and that's part that, of being a professional. He lost control of, of it. opinion between a, a law right. enforcement officer in an urban setting and a, and a civilian who doesn't understand what the work entails. 